colleague uh, Mike Slotsnick will pick up from here with uh, some additional observations. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Mike Slotsnick. Mike, you're, turn, you're muted, Mike. Mike, you're still muted. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you very much. Thank you, and thanks, John. To be clear, the uh, Eritrean refugees haven't suffered the same wholesale atrocities that have been visited upon the Tigrayans. Those atrocities against the Tigrayans are unspeakable, and they're the subjects of other EPA webinar webinars in this series. But I'd like to return now to the theme that John began with, of what's uncommon in this calamity for Eritrean refugees specifically. One, the invasion and destruction of UNHCR refugee camps. This is criminal and uncommon in the world's experience. Two, the abduction of refugees and the forcible return of those refugees to the very country from which they had fled. This too is criminal and uncommon. Three, the killing of refugees by soldiers of the country from which they had fled. Criminal and uncommon. Number four, the complicity in these crimes by the country that's been hosting and securing the refugees and that's been entrusted by the world to do that. Ethiopia, criminal and uncommon. Number five, the blocking of international humanitarian actors from accessing refugee, refugee camps for the purposes of saving lives, criminal and uncommon. Number six, Ethiopia abjectly lying to its long-term ally, the United States, and denying all of those circumstances, <laughs> maybe not criminal, but probably uncommon. So Eritrea has now exported to Ethiopia the sorts of atrocities that for decades it has perpetrated within its own borders. International law forbids these crimes. We believe that the world must now recognize a couple of core facts. First, the current Erit Eritrean regime can never be counted upon to not attempt massive crimes against the Eritrean refugees that remain in Tigray or elsewhere in Ethiopia, even if the Eritrean forces were to withdraw from Tigray temporarily. Second, the current Ethiopian regime can never be counted upon to protect the refugees from the Eritrean forces. To be blunt, there's every reason to believe that the Eritrean government sooner or later, and quite possibly sooner, could attack, kill, and abduct more Eritreans in Ethiopia. All of that brings us to proposing protective measures that we feel are likely as extraordinary as the crimes that they would seek to prevent. Specifically, we propose enabling all Eritrean refugees, if they wish, to move to safety in other parts of Ethiopia or even third countries. We understand that discussions, discussions have occurred around moving some of the refugees to a UNHCR supported camp in Amhara. We also understand that UNHCR is attempting to protect some of the refugees in Addis. Thirdly, we assume that many Eritrean refugees may not want to leave Tigray, where they maintain a remnant of their pre-war social cohesion and share a language and a cultural affinity with their host Tigrayan community. Similarly, some may not wish to leave Addis. But we would emphasize that, in our view, no Eritrean refugees are currently safe in Tigray, in Addis, or possibly anywhere in Ethiopia. In particular, we fear that the Ethiopian government's efforts to concentrate the refugees in the southern camps is a recipe for disaster. Hence, our extreme proposal. So, thank you all for attending. Thank you, IPA, for this forum. We share our good wishes with all of you who are committed to protecting Eritrean refugees and to advancing the human rights of the Eritrean people. Thank you very much.